In this session, I'm going to explain a little bit more about um, the NERMS uh, subdivision operations you can do on polygonal primitives in 3ds Max. Uh, I'm going to create a very simple uh, geometry for that, a little cube, let's say 10 by 10 by 10 meters. Convert that into a uh, into an editable polygon because right now it's uh, just a, a parametric box object. Um, uh, convert it to uh, an editable polygon, um, and then uh, you see that you can go into into the different um, uh, object le sub object levels of that, uh, and I'm going to. Uh, and on the sub-object level of um, the individual faces. Zooming in here a little bit. Um, and I'm going to select uh, three f uh, three of the faces in order to extrude them. Um, now, there are different modes um, you can extrude uh, uh, faces of a polygonal shape. Um, these can be set in the uh, in the extrude polygons options. Um, so you can either um, extrude them along uh, a low, uh, uh, and the local normal um, they, they have in common or uh, based on the normal of each um, individual polygon. So I'm going to do that and extrude them 10 by 10 uh, uh, with 10 me meter length each uh, which was, gives me this result and, um, and I'm going to delete the, um, these uh, faces here delete 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 and now what I, what ha what happens now is um, that I can actually look inside the uh, the polygon uh, and the problem here is of is that the backs of the faces uh, so the sides and that show that are away from uh, what the normals point to are not rendered this can this behavior can be influenced uh, for example by uh, in, the, in the viewport in the display settings for the whole layer or for individual objects I'm going to um, <coughs> turn and uh, turn on backface rendering uh, for the whole layer so I go to manage layers and um, so everything is uh, in this default layer and for this default layer in the display properties uh, section of the layer properties I'm going to check off the backface cull option which as you will see lets me look inside um, the, uh, the the polygon and see the back sides of uh, the individual faces um, now that we have a uh, now that we have a basic shape I'm going to use um, NERMS subdivision um, on this uh, object. So uh, either go to the graphite uh, modeling tools and click the use NERMS option. Um, the same thing can be achieved by scrolling down in the uh, modifier panel all the way to the subdivision surface category. Um, it's a little bit easier to do it on the, uh, on the graphite modeling tools bar on the panel um, because uh, it, uh, it saves you from a lot of scrolling. Um, so you can either turn it on here or turn it on, turn it off and on, toggle it on and off here. Uh, what actually happens, um, I'm going to quickly uh, check the edge to, sh to, to show the edges of my faces. What actually happens is you have two things, you have the, the orange um, cage which can be toggled on and off, show cage, uh, which is uh, nothing else than the um, than the uh, the edges of the uh, original of my original polygon. So if you if I toggle this on and off, you see that the orange cage of the subdivision surface is um, uh, is the uh, is the the edges um, of my original polygon. Um, this subdivision uh, algorithm can be applied uh, a number of times. Let's first see what what actually happens by uh, setting on the ISO line. So these uh, this original polygon is subdivided um, into into these polygons. Um, is smooth into the, these polygons. If I increase the iteration on here, um, I get more polygons in the end, uh, and the whole 
shape is smoother. Uh, you got to be a little bit careful with that, with increasing the number of iterations since um, when having uh, larger poly uh, base polygons, um, this can quickly grow out of hand and you end up with a lot of um, a lot of polygons and a very sluggish behavior, a very sluggish speed of the whole application. So um, what I'm going to demonstrate is that that uh, the well uh, the the, um, the smooth curves here you, you see here in um, uh, between the uh, the original faces um, that you can influence how the smoothing actually um, occurs by placing by subdividing the original mesh um, through uh, through further loops and I will switch off uh, uh, I will switch off norms again. Um, so we're back to the uh, to the normal display, and um, I'm going to um, I'm going to use the swift loop tool, which is a very handy way to to introduce new loops to subdivide um, the original polygon into uh, smaller polygons, and I'm going to place a loop here um, and see what this means in terms of subdivision. So uh, you can you can already see in this state that um, uh, that the that the angle the the smoothing um, angle uh, between these two two elements is different uh, f from from those uh, uh, from the side where I did it from the original geometry. You can um, so this is the uh, this is the additional this is the additional um, part of the um, of the cage and using uh, under the selection tools using the loop mode again i can select the whole uh, uh, select the whole r uh, ring um of this if i switch off the um go to edge uh, go to uh, go to the edge mode and select this whole ring uh, switch it off on again and um by moving this ring you can interactively influence how um, how this uh, the, the, the smoothing behaves, and by introducing even even more uh, loops uh, into the original um, into the original um, design, I'm going to switch that off again. Um, swift loop again, and I'm going to place a second loop in here um, and see that the um, effect gets even more um, dramatic. So, uh, we're back on the uh, uh, edge mode and I'm uh, switching the swift loop off and again by uh, by moving uh, uh, by moving these edges uh, very close to each other um, I can get an almost orthogonal kink in here and this is the way how uh, you can locally influence um, you can lo locally influence the behavior of the subdivision uh, uh, of the NERMS subdivision operations uh, in your geometry. And that's all for this session.